Well, I started off with tremors in the hand, which were pretty normal for Parkinson's patients. That's typically how they define that you have Parkinson's is where the tremor begins in your hand. And then I got them in both hands, and I got them in one leg, and I got them in the other leg. And then I proceeded to get tremors in my head, which um, amounted to what they call dyskinesias, um, which, where, where you see Michael J. Fox with them a lot, where his head goes back and forth and, and he sort of sidles in and out of things. Um, I was taking regular, pre-regular treatment for it. I had some good folks up at Hershey who were help, helping with the cocktails that were making me, uh, were reducing my symptoms, but at some point I'd reached about 23 pills a day, and I got two 15-minute good periods a day out of it. So that was when it was time to take another turn in the action. Deep brain stimulation was a total of an eight-hour process. It's probably overinflated to call it a deep brain stimulation. It makes it sound a little too hairy, but... Uh, Essentially what they did was they drilled two holes in the top of my head and they put a probe in, uh, an electrode really, in, that uh, provided an electrical impulse into my uh, brain where the cinemet is produced, the dopamine is produced in the brain. And then they ran a couple of wires up here around the back of my head and down to two, uh, they're sort of like... Um, Transmit. Tra they're, tra they're not transmitters, but they're, they're um, like pacemakers. Like implants? They send, yeah, they implant two pacemakers in here. They send electrical impulses back to that part of the brain. And then they end up controlling the production of L-dopa, dopamine in the system. And, uh, and it was a great procedure. I mean, it worked out really well for me. Um, I didn't have any other pre-existing conditions and anybody would, it had any impact on it. Um, but it took me, as I said, it was an eight-hour procedure. I was awake for about two, an hour of it. Um, and it's had a tremendous effect on my ability to remain motionless and to hold things still for a, again. Uh, my penmanship has improved a lot. My ability to exercise has improved a lot. My, I don't um, have the balance problems that I used to have. I have, I don't know, there's probably, there's probably more than that. I'm, uh, I'm exercising every day now where I could barely shuffle along before. She's adjusting the, the, the right side over here right now, you can tell immediately go into my triggers there. So if you now if you took a look at the whole thing, I can't really stand up right now because my hips are too busy with the tremors. And it changes my voice around and it changes the way my hands are. You know, I, this is this is what I had to deal with before, before there was any treatment for it like this. Point seven. Okay. I think this was the two point five. Yeah. What do you add? Two point five. Yeah, let's try the other okay. side. Okay. All right, I have to turn it yeah. off. I'm just about there. My leg tremors have stopped. Okay, so that's as high as I can go because they have it. That was exhausting. exhausting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see that now I'm at, at completely, you know, there's a much bigger difference. The hands are doing fine. Right? So, even with a little bit of twitches left in my legs, it's hardly anything compared to. I was going through before. Getting them now is easy to do. It, it, it is it, because it's been so successful with me. I'm inclined to, you know, recommend it to anybody who's got Parkinson's. But now there are a couple of different variations in the Parkinson's team, and some people can't have another surgery, can't have a skull opening surgery to begin with, and so they have to be careful about it. And I have to be cautious not to give anybody some false expectations, but. It's, it is a little bit difficult to find anybody who will perform the procedure in the Lancaster area. Um, I know it's not a popular procedure to do because it seems so invasive. Um, and it is, it is invasive, but it's sort of no more risky than any other surgery would be when you go in and do it. So I would encourage people who haven't had it, who really want to get rid of their symptoms, to at least talk to their doctor about doing it.